Hi, it's Ingrid Bill from Pre-Hospital Wisdom. Our channel talks about the fact that all medical providers have strong similarities, but medics and EMTs have specific knowledge and skill sets that other providers don't. We concentrate our focus there. The Chuck Yeager voice. Chuck Yeager's a West Virginian pilot who was a fighter ace in World War II, was shot down in over-occupied France, evaded capture, became a U.S. Air Force test pilot at the very beginning of the jet age, led fighter squadrons and wings over Korea and Vietnam, and became the first pilot to break the sound barrier, officially on October 14, 1947. He performed the last feat, uh, hiding a set of broken ribs from his boss and the flight surgeon, and the flight profile didn't call for him to break the sound barrier that day. The man is a genuine badass legend. He touched American culture in another way, however, as explained by Tom Wolfe in his 1979 novel, The Right Stuff. Let me quote from that book. Anyone who travels very much on airlines in the United States soon gets to know the voice of the airline pilot coming over the intercom with a particular drawl, a particular folksiness, a particular down-home calmness that's so exaggerated it begins to parody itself. The voice it tells you as the airliner is caught in thunderheads and goes bolting up and down a thousand feet at a single gulp to check your seat belts because, <clears throat> uh, folks, it might get a little choppy. Who doesn't know that voice and who can forget it even after it's proved right and the emergency is over? It's that particular voice may sound vaguely southern or southwestern, but is specifically Appalachian in origin. It originated in the mountains of West Virginia in the coal country in Lincoln County so far up in the hollows that, as the saying went, they had to pipe in daylight. In the late 1940s and early 1950s, this up hollow voice drifted down from on high, from over the high desert of California, down, 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 from the upper reaches of the pilot brotherhood into all phases of American aviation. It was amazing. It was Pygmalion in reverse. Military pilots and then soon airline pilots, pilots from Maine and Massachusetts and the Dakotas and Oregon, and everywhere else began to talk in that poker hollow voice from West Virginia, or as close to it as they could bend their native accents. It was a drawl of the most righteous of all the possessors of the right stuff, Chuck Yeager. Yeager's unconcerned modulated speech pattern, twang and all, was copied from pilot to pilot until it diffused out of the test pilot program into general aviation, where you, you have heard it while flying yourself. And from there it diffused into other fields like EMS. This pattern is something we should all aspire to when we're on the radio. Not the Appalachian twang necessarily, but the calm, unperturbed professionalism. When I'm on the radio or the biophone, I try to make it so that the listener can't tell if I'm in the middle of the hairiest scene ever or call we've each run three times that day. I strive for the same calm, clear, professional voice, unruffled, no matter what. It takes five seconds to think about what I want to say, take a relaxing deep breath, and make a conscious effort to channel General Jaeger. But those five seconds are a worthwhile investment rather than transmitting a weepy shriek for additional units. It sets up the rest of the call for success or failure by establishing the mindset for the other involved people. <clears throat> uh, dispatch, Ambulance 5. This will be an MCI with at least four critical GSW victims. Can I get three more ambulances and a supervisor to this scene? And can you give preliminary notification to the ED when you get a chance, please? Modulate the tone to a conversational pattern. Speak clearly and slow your speech. It's the equivalent of saying, uh, folks, this is the flight deck. I hope you're having a good flight. We seem to have had the right engine tear plumb off the wing, so I'm going to have to illuminate the seatbelt light and um, go ahead and ask you to return to your seats. When I think about it, it's important to practice this habit beyond radio transmissions and phone calls. Think about how a family will interpret shouted, excitable order, orders and big arm gestures versus the calm direction of a scene breath professional who has it under control. Think about how a patient interprets, Jesus, dude, we're losing him, put your foot down, versus asking for a bit more speed in the transport of a conversational tone. It doesn't matter what your brain is screaming at you, act like you've got everything under control. In general, however, sounding all worked up and panicked is definitely not the way to look cool. And look cool is EMS rule number two. So channel the most righteous of all the possessors of the right stuff when you're on the radio. General Chuck Yeager. I'm interested in whether you agree or disagree. Uh, so let us know in the comments. Make sure to share, like, and subscribe. Stay safe until next time.